decades in the business. Calling MPC. Super Rugby in all its forms, test matches out of Christchurch for Radio Sport, for News Talk ZB. So after the weekend, mate, how do I, I mean, what do I, where the hell are we at, Brian? Yeah, I, I, it was interesting. I, I sort of looked at it. One of the stats that interested me, we had the most ball, didn't we, in that test match? Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, people talked about, you know, Puma's defence. The All Blacks' defence was very good as well. Not not quite as good, but nonetheless very good. So, for me, I, th- I think the, the loose forward mix is, is problematic. Uh, nine and ten are problematic. Uh, I thought, and, and, and Cody Taylor, his game, uh, even through Super Rugby, it just is disintegrating before our very eyes, which I've never seen um, somebody's, or, or particularly his, in his career anyway, um, his, his game in the state of affairs. And I, I just think he needs a bit of a break. They are the problem areas for me. Okay, so who do we point the finger at? Because if Jason Ryan, the guru, comes in and we stop the rolling mall in Africa, well, two weeks later, um, our line-out is dysfunctional. Um, our scrum worked bloody well. Um, but, you know, we, we've got this terrible attack at the moment where we're just so one-dimensional, it seems. We're one-off runners, and if you complete your tackle like the Argentinians did, we've got no line breakers. I mean, it just all, it's just all the same, mate. I mean, we kind of went backwards, didn't we, to what we were seeing against Ireland. We were so ineffective. So who do you point the finger at, and whose fault is it? Yeah, and, and to that end, uh, I think 9 and 10 uh, have to put their hands up a wee bit there. You know, I was looking at it um, at times, and, and whether they are rigidly sticking to a game plan or not playing what's in front of them, which I think is part of the problem, um, they're not sort of seeing the game they, 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 as, in the way that they do in, in, in Super Rugby, and they're rigidly sticking to a philosophy and, and, and not adjusting accordingly, I think there is an element of that, and they just need to loosen up a wee bit. Now, that's a coaching issue, but nonetheless, um, these are experienced guys, you know, 100-plus tests, Aaron Smith, uh, Richie Moonga, who uh, hasn't, in, in reality, you know, he played, played well last week. Um, he had a very good game against the Wallabies last year, I think. Uh, at, at test level, hasn't adjusted and, and, and isn't playing with the same freedom uh, of mind that we see in Super Rugby. There were a couple of times there where I thought, there's an opportunity here for a chip in. Look at the little hole there in, in, in the back. And, 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 and they just didn't do that. And they just seemed to be trying to do the same thing that obviously we know um, what wasn't working. Um, in terms of the lineouts, you, you mentioned, well, well, you know, I mean, the, the last 20 minutes, and, and goes back to what I was sort of saying, you know, about Cody Taylor, and um, it, it was actually sort of quite quite painful to watch. That that would be the only real sort of change I'd want to see uh, in, in, in the tight five mix. And I think there's a there's a problem there that they've got with Hooker, and so much as Tokiaho is is outstanding, uh, Cody Taylor's off his game. Dane Coles isn't the Dane Coles that we. Um, just love, still got the abrasiveness, but maybe not the ability. So where do you go next? And uh, I think that's problematic. I think they just have to make a big call and go a little bit younger. And, and, and obviously they've dipped their toes with, with one or two uh, in, in recent years, and they might have to sort of go back and mine those areas. Brian Ashby is with us, voice of radio sport for so long, working with us. And, you know, I guess the reason I wanted to talk to you is because, you know, you've watched so much rugby and you sit there and you think, OK, this All Black side, here we are at 15-6, and normally, you know, we've got we've just scored that second try by Caleb Clark. We look bloody good. I mean, we're tackling well. Our scrum just monstered theirs. Everything is going well. We shut the game down. At that stage, I thought the test match was over, mate. And then, but you can't give away yeah. 18 points off the boot against any test side. That's that's one thing I'll say. The other thing is the days of the All Blacks going on and ripping these teams and scoring 40 points, and we were probably flattered against Ireland in that first test by doing that. This is long gone. We we don't beat these teams by 20 points now. I think people have got to accept, don't you think, that the gap has actually shut. And if you look at the results from just this rugby championship, the topsy-turvy nature of them, we can point the finger at South Africa. This is the world champions. They've lost to Wales, us and Australia already this year. So do we sack their coach? Well, um, probably. Um, you know, they, they, I mean, look, we're, we're at a point where I would imagine if we lose the Bledisloe Cup that, that our coach will probably fall on his sword. I mean, how, how you know, what, what gives um, in, in the end? I, th- I think there is a problem, I think, with some of the selections and philosophies, particularly around 
the loose forwards. Um, you know, we've let Lachlan Boshier go, and what I'd give to have him in the mix there at the moment. Um, Adi Savier is a must-have, um, and, it, and, and to me, it doesn't actually matter what position he plays in; he's just that good. But you know, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm, you know, Frizzell was tremendous against South Africa, but both him and, and even more so Akira Ioane, um, these are guys who come and go in games, and, and they ju- you know you just can't rely on them for a solid 80 minutes, and that's the frustration. You know, we I suppose we've spoiled by you know Jerome Kano for yeah. so so long, um, you know, in, in that position, and, and you know we've we've lost Boshier. Um, Sam Kane isn't even the best Sam Kane style flanker in New Zealand, I don't think, um, at, at the moment. I'd, I'd like to see um, Papali'i given a go. You know, I, somebody whose name is never mentioned, but but look. Look at the, the work rate and tackle count in Super Rugby, Tom, Tom Christie. There's an argument that he's a wee bit small for Test Rugby. Um, maybe he's an end-of-year prospect. Obviously, Ethan Blackhead is out injured at the moment, and, and I'd probably sort of you know, give a bit to have him in there. Um, Cullen Grace, I think, should be in the mix um, at the moment. And the guy just is a diesel engine who goes for 80 minutes, and he's got long-term Test player written all over him. Unfortunately, uh, in the right here right now, and I haven't, um, seen an update or, or uh, hands-on enough to, to know, but he went off with what looked like a, a fairly reasonable sort of fairly substantial shoulder-type injury in, in, in Canterbury's win over Tasman on, on Friday night. But, uh, you know, look, if, if a fully fit Cullen Grace, I think he's a must-have in that mix at the moment. I'm just not seeing the heart from those loose forwards at the moment uh, in a way that we've been spoiled in the past. Ash, also the other thing is, you know, you talk about 80-minute players. What What is this obsession? Aaron Smith, is he incapable of going past 60 minutes in a game? Because to me, if that's the case, let him go now. You know, when you're in the last 20 minutes of a test match that you're behind on the scoreboard and you're desperate to win it, we take off our captain, we take off our most experienced halfback. I don't get this. Is this some kind of sports science thing where they're only allowed to play a certain amount. At 50 minutes, our front row's dominating. Let's get them all out of there. I, this is the coaching stuff I just don't understand. You know, if your team is winning and, and, and they're dominating the opposition, you know, we used to just put the foot on the throat, turn the screw and say, that's it, game over. And I, and I feel every time we make these stupid substitutions, we're losing something as opposed to gaining something. Yeah, I, I, it's interesting. I was thinking about that. And I, you know, you've got somebody as experienced as Cody Taylor, who's been such a tremendous performer for so, so long, and you would expect a massive impact from him off the bench. So I got that. You know, I, I, as, as well as Tokiaho was, was playing, uh, to me, that was the, the, the hammer-down scenario. Unfortunately, it was, it was the, the, the exact opposite, um, the, the, the complete and utter opposite. I think with the props, I, I think, you know, you needed to give them maybe graduated another five or ten minutes. It's not as if um, it was a, a scrum-filled match um, uh, at all, so you could have got a little bit more out of those guys. And, I, look, I don't think we lost a great deal from the, the guys who came on other than at hooker with, with Tokiaho, who... Um, I, I think probably most would judge is, is one player who who came out with um, of, of, of the match with a, maybe a slightly enhanced reputation. Penalty wise, we got ping, pinged, and pinged. And speaking to Frankie Davis um, uh, just about half an hour ago or so, this, the Argentinian perspective on this is simply that you guys were infringing. You infringe under pressure. The referee's calling it. Now we can argue till the cows come home whether that Georgian ref got it right or not. But you have to adjust to the referee on the field, and that's another thing that we didn't do to keep them in the game by letting them score three points. And then when we get a chance at 19-18 down to go ahead and we don't take it, they were, they had nothing on attack at all apart from that one botched kickoff from Scott Barrett and they scored off that. They were making no inroads with us whatsoever. Why don't we go ahead and then say to them, right, you have to, keep, you have to bring the game to us? I don't understand those decisions. Well, you know, the, 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 the goal-kicking scenario, we... we suddenly we're taking a 60 metre one but we're turning down other ones in Argentina you know they just just tap 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 and over they go it's test match rugby and sometimes we just get a little bit ahead of ourselves um some would say a little bit up ourselves and 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 uh, uh I, I would say that actually <laughs> and, and you, you, you know you take the opportunities that are there the easy option um particularly at those points in the game when the the scoreboard um is is as tight as it is so um, that, that, that's decision making, and that's that's the leadership, and they have to have a sort of a good good long look at themselves there. In terms of the infringements, look, this is um, 
This is not something new. Um, you, you summed it up. Yeah, you adjust to the referees. No point in bitching about the referee. This is a guy who um, was was refereeing the rule by the book. Um, we mightn't like it, but there wasn't a lot wrong with the calls that he was making. So you make the adjustment. And, you know, look, this this is Super Rugby was littered with teams not making the adjustment. The champions this year um, through the round robin were um, a heavily penalised team and, and, and were getting yellow cards and, and weren't making the adjustment. And that's something that, that's, again, a weakness uh, in overall in New Zealand coaching uh, in a way. We've just got to just, just build the... Um, the nous, the intelligence, the um, intellectual uh, capacity to to make the adjustments as as uh, as as the game unfolds, uh, and and I guess it's just something we're not particularly good at at the moment. But we what we are good at as fans is having a bitch about the referee afterwards. Mm. All right, then. So we play Argentina again this weekend. When you look at those results, I mean, it's just so peculiar, isn't it? Australia get whacked in that second test from them by 40 points. They, they, all their players are out injured. South Africa, the world champions. As I say, they, they, you know, they, lo- they lose to us. They lose to us. They've lost three games already this year. Um, Argentina were, had 40 points put on them by Australia. They turn around, they beat us. You know, going into this test match this weekend, when's the last time you actually ever thought, you know, I'm not confident as an All Blacks fan that we're going to win a game, let alone win it by 20 points or 30 points. This is just the reality now. Well, yeah, yeah it was funny. I, I, had, I can't remember exactly what the numbers were, but I remember looking at the TAB odds on Thursday or Friday and the All Blacks were at about $1.08 or something like that. And, and Argentina were well out. I, I, again, I, I can't remember what the figure was, but it was miles out. So it was, I mean, essentially, everyone, you know, it was a done deal in our mind. It wasn't in my mind. I was like, oh, really? Really? I right, look, I'm not confident. Um, we we can't be because we we just haven't been good enough and we haven't been good enough for a long time. Of course, we want them to win, but there, there's a cold harsh reality um, that we haven't been good enough. And and you know I'm I'm yeah I'm I'm interested this this weekend obviously, but but my nerves I'm starting to get a little bit edgy about the the, the bloody slow cup. You know um, we've we've had it since forever, but I, I think uh, this is the most vulnerable we have ever been. What's going on with Michael Hooper? Is, is this part of a bigger plan to put him in cotton wool? Here? I don't think so, ahead of the Bledisloe Cup. But, but the Australians, uh, Dave, Dave Rennie, um, I, I think he'd be rubbing his hands together a wee bit at the moment. And, and you know, um, uh, this, this isn't disrespecting our all-black team at all. These are just the cold, harsh realities of, of what we're facing. We are just... Not that good at the moment. I think we can be good. I think the talent is there. I think some selection tweaks um, uh, and and not major ones. Uh, you know, I've talked about the loose forward mix. Um, uh, you know, who starts at nine? Um, I don't think there are a lot of more options at ten. I think we can get better out of um, Richie Moanga. I, I don't think Bowden Barrett is the solution because I think uh, you know the backline functions. The broader backline functions better without Bowden Barrett. The tremendous, tremendous finisher of a game, absolutely tremendous. Um, you know, maybe is Perifeta an option to start at, at ten? I, I don't know. Um, I, I think he's got more to offer than the fifty seconds that we saw from him. Finally, then Christchurch, how's that stink? Uh, look, I thought it was on the um, on on the fix up, and then then suddenly a lot of people on on social media apparently it's, it's absolutely horrendous seeping back into the homes. Um, they've cleaned out the filters, and uh, uh, I thought, oh, she's all all good now, but but now um, they just haven't got a proper system. So um, you know, if the curry houses are going well, Christchurch as a whole is is well, it's a bit of a hole really. It's it's it's, it's pretty damned unpleasant. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, we've we've been failed by our. Uh, our, our city administrator. At least the roads are good, though. They've fixed all of them now. Oh, stop it. Just stop it. No, they haven't. 